Hello again. Welcome to the next video in our series for Duchenne Education, brought to you by the Cure Duchenne Cares Program. My name is Jennifer Wallace. I am a physical therapist and owner at Duchenne Therapy Network. Today's topic is Duchenne muscular dystrophy's effect on the respiratory system. Yes, my name is Jane Taylor. I'm a pediatric pulmonologist here at Children's Mercy, Kansas City, and I'm the pulmonologist who's part of our multidisciplinary Duchenne's Muscular Dystrophy Clinic. Would you please explain to us how do the lungs work? And that actually is a very good question because every time you take a deep breath in, you're actually bringing part of the environment into your body with that breath of air. The lungs, just like the skin or the gut, is actually exposed to the environment at all times. And the whole purpose of the lungs is to take a deep breath and bring in that air because it has the oxygen which your body needs. Then the oxygen is exchanged with something called carbon dioxide, which is a waste product, and you breathe it out as you exhale. But obviously, when you're breathing in from the environment, you're gonna also bring in some dust in the dirt particles as well as pollen and molds bacteria, viruses, lots of different things which you don't want in your lungs. So the lungs have devised a very elegant way of keeping themselves clean. They actually keep themselves clean by using a mucociliary elevator. And I like to think of that like a saltwater swimming pool. And if I was a silly, I would have thousands of my little friends standing behind me. And if we have our feet at the bottom of the saltwater swimming pool and we extend our hands all the way up, we actually just reach the top of that swimming pool layer. And our whole job is to move in a coordinated manner to make a current in that swimming pool. So the water is always moving from the very bottom parts of the lungs up towards the mouth. So you can cough up a layer of mucus, which is normal. The body produces this to act as kind of a fly paper. So it will trap any of the bacteria or the viruses or particulate matter like dust in this mucus layer. And then the cilia help move this swimming pool water layer up and out of the lungs. How does having Duchenne affect these respiratory systems? So that is an excellent question. How does Duchenne's affect the mucociliary elevator and the cough reflex and airway clearance? And children with Duchenne's develop respiratory muscle weakness over time. The actual cilia does not get affected. In early stage Duchenne's, I actually try and address any type of disease process that's going to increase the mucus on that mucus layer. So that could be any symptoms of asthma, any symptoms of allergic rhinitis, or any aspiration. Eventually, the actual respiratory muscles that help you take deep breaths and also cough up the mucus is going to be affected. Why is it important to have good airway clearance? Now the importance of having good airway clearance is because if the mucus stays down there for too long, then obviously that increases the inflammation in the body. It increases your risk of infection. And also, the mucus can build up on itself and starts to bunch up, kind of like chewing gum, which in the smaller airways can actually gum and plug that airway up. So all of the lung that's lowered down from that plug no longer takes in oxygen or is able to breathe out the carbon dioxide. And that part of the lung actually can collapse down. It's called atelectasis. How does steroid treatment affect the respiratory system? So steroid treatment in patients with Duchenne's has been shown to help the respiratory system. And how it does that is it maintains the overall muscle strength, including that of the respiratory muscles for a longer period of time. That decreases the risk of early onset scoliosis, which does impair the ability of the lungs to keep themselves clean, but also to ventilate easily. Because if you sit up and take a deep breath, you can see how easy it is to breathe. But if you actually then bend over and twist and try and take a breath, you can feel how hard it is. So the longer we keep our kids ambulatory, that helps prevent early onset scoliosis. When should someone with Duchenne begin seeing a pulmonologist? So I would recommend that a patient with Duchenne's see a pulmonologist as soon as they're diagnosed because it's actually very important to keep the lungs healthy and clean and be proactive in the process. 
And different disease states like asthma or allergic rhinitis can actually increase the amount of mucus that is down in the lungs. I also will screen them for any obstructive sleep apnea because in our Duchenne's population, even in very young boys who are still ambulatory, some of the upper airway respiratory muscles can be a little weaker. So when they go into deep stage sleep or dream sleep, all their accessory muscles are turned off so the upper airways can be floppy and, and that can, when you're taking deep breaths in and out, actually compress the airways down to a point where it's affecting some of your oxygenation. And if we are able to screen for that and catch it early, we can make sure that they're not choking or aspirating some of their secretions when they're sleeping down into their lungs. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. All of this information is very important and useful to our Duchenne community. Stay tuned for part two of the pulmonology topic, which will cover more advanced concepts, including equipment needed in managing pulmonary care in someone with Duchenne. Subscribe to this channel to get notifications when new videos are released. You may contact us at the information above. And thank you to our sponsors.